Hey, we often pass parameters or other data on the URL when issuing an HTTP request. We pass an ID to retrieve the details for one product, or search parameters to locate products matching specific search criteria. In this video, we walk through how to pass data on a URL when issuing an HTTP request using the Resource API. Let's take a look. I'm in StackBlitz with my demo application open. We're looking at the vehicle service. We use the Star Wars API, or SWAPI, to access vehicle data and display that data in the Select box. To issue the HTTP request and return the result as a signal, this code leverages the experimental resource API. Here we use Rx resource to retrieve vehicles. When this service is initialized, the loader function executes and issues the HTTP GET request. If you are new to the Resource API, check out my video, First Look at Angular's new resource and Rx resource. Notice that this URL does not require any parameters or other data. How would we pass data into this loader function? To demonstrate, I added a Film Details option. Here we get the data for one film by passing in the film sequence number. I've created the template for entry of the episode sequence number. Swappy only has data for movies 1 through 7, identified in release date order. And I've created the component, which currently declares some hard-coded signals. That way the bindings in our template compile. Here is the film service. So far, I've only declared the Swappy URL to access film data, injected HTTP client, and defined the film interface. Let's start by declaring the signals we need. We want an episode number, which is a signal that holds the user entered number or undefined. It's initially undefined until the user enters a number. Next, we get the film data for the entered episode number. Let's declare a resource, Film Resource, and set it to Rx Resource. The Rx Resource API takes an object. Set the loader function of the object to this.http.get. We are expecting to get film data, so that's our generic argument. Use backticks to define a template literal string. That makes it easier to concatenate additional information on the URL. We embed an expression or variable into the template literal using dollar and curly braces. Reference this dot film URL for the URL. Then Swappy requires a slash followed by the episode number. Since that is also a variable, we again use dollar and curly braces. Specify this dot episode num and parentheses to read the signal value. Spoiler alert, this code won't work. We can't pass in a signal like this. Well, let's continue and see why. The film data is returned in the value property of the resource. Create another signal, I'll call it film, and define a computed signal. In the computed function, reference this dot film resource dot value. Use parentheses to read the signal. Lastly, let's create an isLoading signal that references the isLoading property of the resource, this dot film resource dot isLoading. I've already mentioned that this code won't work, but before we can try it out, we need to modify the film selection component to reference the signals from our service. In the film selection component, set the episode num signal to this dot film service dot episode num. Set the film signal to this dot film service dot film, and set is loading to this dot film service dot is loading. Now that we have all of the code in place, let's give it a try. In the UI, enter a sequence number between 1 and 7. I'll put in 1, which is my favorite Star Wars film. But no data appears. What happened? Going back to the film service, we can't simply reference a signal in the loader function. That's because the loader function is not tracked. That means that a change in the signal does not run the loader function again. So this code only runs with the initial value of our signal, which is undefined. 
To better see how this works, let's change the initial value of our episode num signal to 1. Now the application gets the data for the first released movie, A New Hope. But if we put in another number, say 4, nothing happens. Our loader function is not re-executing. Let's change our initial value back to undefined. Now that we see the issue, how do we fix this? Instead of accessing the signal in the loader function, we use the request property of the resource parameter. This property defines a function that produces a value. If we reference a signal or set of signals in this function, the loader function re-executes any time any of those signals change. For this example, we set the request function to this dot episode num. That returns the episode num signal value. And any time that signal changes, the loader function re-executes. Now we need to pass this request to the loader function. Hovering over loader, we see that the loader function takes in resource loader params. Resource loader params is an object with three properties. The request, previous, which provides the previous resource status, and abort signal for aborting the request. We'll talk more about these last two options in later videos. For now, we'll just use the request property. The request property provides the result from our request function, which in this case returns the value from our episode num signal. We append that request to the URL. Let's give that a try. Type in a number, say 1, and we see the film data. Yay! Change it to 4, and we see that film's data. It works! Before we move on, let's look at what happens when our signal is undefined. We set the initial value of our episode num signal to undefined. The resource loader function then does not execute when this service is initialized. It won't run until the signal changes. Let's see that in action. Open the browser console and click the Network tab. Then reload the Film Details page. Notice that no HTTP request is executed. Enter 4, and we see the HTTP request to retrieve the fourth movie. So another advantage to using the request parameter is that you can better control when the HTTP request is issued. I'll close the console. What about passing multiple parameters? Say we want to find all films released between two dates. Start by defining the signals for the parameters. I'll paste them in. As their names imply, the start range signal defines the beginning of the range. The end range signal defines the end of the range. Since this could return more than one film, we'll declare a films resource, plural. We'll again use Rx resource and pass in an object. We set the request property to a function that returns an object. We add parentheses around the curly braces so the function knows we are defining an object, not a multi-line function. In the object, we define two properties, start, which returns this dot start range, and end, which returns this dot end range. We set the loader function to our HTTP request. I'll paste in the first part. This time we want to add a question mark at the end of the URL to define a query string. Then set our query parameters according to the requirements of our HTTP endpoint. For our case, let's set the start query parameter to our request.start. Be sure to add parentheses to read the signal. Then add the end query parameter to request.end and add parentheses. That should do it. The public swappy endpoint doesn't support a date lookup, so this request won't actually work, but we can still see what it requests. Open the browser console and reload the page. We see the URL with the query parameters. I'll close the console. So, how do we pass data to an HTTP request with the resource API? First, we use the request property and set it to a function. That function references one or more signals. When any of those signals change, the associated loader function re-executes. Next, 
pass the data returned by the request function to the loader function using the loader function parameters. Lastly, we use the loader function parameters as needed in the URL. Here we added it to the end of the URL to specify a particular movie. And here we used it to define query parameters. Thanks for watching. If this information was useful, please like and subscribe.